This special board meeting of the Judson Board of Trustees is hereby called to order at 7 p.m. I'm very pleased that you've taken time to join us this evening. As the Judson Board of Trustees, we are here to set goals and policies and oversee the management of the district. We are responsible for approving budgets, contracts, personnel appointments, and to listen to reports from the superintendent. Since it is legally mandated that these proceedings are recorded accurately, I may have to ask for order periodically should I notice that disruptions are interfering with our recording capabilities. Once again, I extend to each of you a sincere welcome from the entire school board. Thank you for your interest in Judson ISD. We've established a quorum and I will call roll. Ms. Rodriguez. Present. And please go ahead and mark present on your electronically. Ms. Pichel. Here. Mr. LaFoyle. Present. Thank you for all showing up. <laughs> Ms. Knoyer. Present. Mr. Macias. Present. Oh, is that right? Yes. And I am Dr. Melinda Salinas. Thank you for coming tonight. To my left, we have our superintendent okay. of schools, Dr. Carl Montoya. Uh, present and members of the board, uh, I will be exiting at this time because I think it's important that you as a board have the time to listen to the presentations, ask questions, and I know that you'll make the best decision for the district. So I am going to leave and enjoy strawberries from Poteet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Montoya. We move, we'll move on to um, item two, consideration of consent items. We will start with A, hear and consider interviews with superintendent search firms. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Ms. Pichal, second by Mr. LaFoyle. We will begin um, with Bob E. Griggs and Associates. I believe Ms. Holmes has explained we're going to give everyone 20 minutes, and then we do have um, questions that the board would like to ask. Madam President, members of the board, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. I am Richard Oinby. Uh, I am the principal of Bobby Griggs and Associates. Dr. Griggs uh, has, uh, I, I wouldn't call him retired, but uh, he is uh, not uh, as active in the day-to-day -day operations as he wants. I, I came with the firm in 2012. I'm a retired uh, executive director of the Region 11 Education Service Center in Fort Worth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before that, I was the superintendent for 22 years in three different school districts, and and like everyone else that's been a superintendent, taught and was a principal and and did all of those things. Uh, Weldon Halfley, one of our associates, is a retired superintendent at Eagle Mountain Saginaw, in uh, a similar district to yours in uh, Fort Worth uh, area. And uh, we have other consultants, but it's a pretty good trip down here from Fort Worth, and so. Uh, we didn't bring five people. We could have. Uh, our others are all uh, retired uh, female superintendents. And so, <clears throat> anyway, uh, you have our materials, so you, you really you should know about us. And uh, so I'd like to talk a little bit about what makes us maybe different. And we believe the thing that makes us different than other search firms is the amount of work that we put into developing the profile you need a superintendent that fits Judson ISD. <clears throat> there are a lot of great superintendents, but they don't all fit. And so we would have meetings with <clears throat> every employee group that you have in the district, a district of your size. Uh, more often, we would combine elementaries, uh, smaller districts. We go to every elementary school, every middle school, every high school. Large districts would go to all the high schools. But we go to every school, we go to the transportation department, the food service, uh, central office, we meet with the principal separately. Uh, and then we meet with every community group that you can tell us that you feel like needs to have a voice, whether it's Lions Clubs, Rotary Clubs, Ministerial Alliances, uh, <clears throat> you have uh, a lot of military influence here in your district, you know, you tell us who they are, we go and we sit and we meet with those people for an hour and we ask a couple of questions and then we say, tell us what it is that you would like to see for characteristics and qualifications of the next superintendent in Judson ISD. From that, we compile a profile. <clears throat> profile is a confidential document. We recruit and screen candidates against the profile. Uh, and once, that, uh, once you have selected a lone finalist, if someone wants to see the profile, they can see the profile. 
The reason it's confidential is if your candidates know what's in the profile, they all try to become what's in the profile. You don't need someone that acts like what you need. You need someone who is what you need. So we spend a great deal of time there. We bring generally 15 people into our office and interview them prior to bringing uh, normally five people to you. Uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we, um, we interview those people. We thoroughly screen them. Uh, we do all the vetting. We go look on social media and all of those things to see, you know, what is it that they post. Um, and um, generally speaking, not many people post things on social media that would be an embarrassment to you, but some do. And so we, we check the references. We do all of those kinds of things to bring you five people that we give you a money-back guarantee. And our money-back guarantee is if that person does not spend the, the length of their first contract with you, we will do the search again free, and I say free, <clears throat> minus the, ex, the direct expenses, or give you your money back. So we, we have had quite good success with that. The firm's done about 280-something searches since 1986. It was founded by uh, Dr. John Townley and Dr. Watson, who were both at the time, Dr. Townley was a retired superintendent in Irving, and Dr. Watson was at the University of North Texas in training school administrators, and he had 200, and uh, Dr. Salinas, you can understand, he had 258 superintendents get their doctorate it's with him as a major professor. He would not give up. He, uh, the current superintendent in Cypress Fairbanks will tell you this story. Um, he was his last one, and he's, he took him in. He says, I'm about to retire, and I'll be blank if you're going to be my first failure. <laughs> and so Dr. Watson was a very special person. Uh, he currently has Alzheimer's and uh, is, not, <clears throat> is not active. But the firm transferred over to uh, Dr. Griggs, and then Dr. Griggs has somewhat passed the torch over to me. And so... If, you, if you're looking through the materials, and I think you're in, one of the things that you were interested in is their past searches. In the last two years, we, we've got currently got Lake Worth. We will present candidates to Lake Worth Wednesday, but we went roughly two years without doing any searches. We were offered the searches, and Dr. Griggs turned them down. He had some health problems. Uh, he's perfectly healthy now, but, you know, you get... Uh, between a detached retina, a defibrillator, skin cancer, and I'm trying to think what the fourth one was, all in there together, it makes you think a little differently about what's important in life. And this, we look at this as a service, not an occupation. And so uh, he loves to travel. Uh, and so he's, uh, he's home right now. He's leaving Saturday. Um, <clears throat> but we... Weldon and I will be your primary people on the job. The other consultants will come in when we're doing the, the profiling process, when we're recruiting and screening applicants, but we will be your primary people. Um, I'd like to Weldon to, to tell you something that makes us different is we, the, firm, the firm would only do six a year while Bob, Dr. Griggs was uh, the principal. And we don't do, ever do more than two at a time. We try not to, and we will not do two of any similar size simultaneously. Uh, we feel like that it's just a conflict. If you're looking at sometimes the same, what would be looked at as if we had the same candidates vying for two jobs with, with us. And so how do, we, how do we do that? And the profile generally will separate those out. And Weldon, I'll let you explain that part just a little. <clears throat> well, good evening, and thanks for allowing us to visit with you. The uh, Richard addressed the profile, and and I think the profile is a is a real important part of what we try to do. And I think every firm will tell you that they listen to input and come up with the profile, but we really do spend time with the people in this community within your school district to find out the best we can what uh, what characteristics will succeed for you at Converse. 
And the, the thing about the profile and the process of us developing it and meeting with all your groups, we will listen to a lot of things that you may not have heard yet, and we'll take them back to Fort Worth with us. We, we won't uh, bother you with them. <laughs> There's a lot of things that people like to talk about that maybe aren't that important, but there's always a few gripes in any district. So we, we, we think we do a pretty good job of separating those from the important facts. And if, if we can, we'll haul them back for you and you won't have to listen to them. The, the, the thing that makes us unique to me, I think we're the only firm that actually conducts interviews. And like Richard said, we will, we will interview about 15 people for the position after we've screened down, and then our goal is to, to bring five people to you, or six if you direct us whatever number you want, but typically it's five, and we want to bring five people that have the qualifications that will fit in, that will do the job. We know that they're capable of doing the job. We bring those to you for you to decide which one fits best with you, when really, We've vetted them enough when we bring those candidates to you. It's a matter of whether or not who you like the best. You know, you've got a first date with every one of them, and it's, you, you decide if you want a second date with them. And so that's kind of the way we look at it. But our goal is to bring you five good candidates. <clears throat> one of the other rumors about search firms that I'd like to just, just kind of address is a lot of people think that a search firm just has their they're stable of applicants, and they're going to roll the same ones over for every job. Well, I know this. Uh, I retired in 05, and I have done, uh, I think it's six interims. And Griggs and Associates did five of the searches while I was interim. And so I saw all the candidates come through, and I did not see a duplicate candidate in all those positions. And uh, I think that's a testimony to the firm that we're going to find the right people for each job. And that's what we're attempting to do. My, I think my last interim was Irving. And they, the Irving board ended up hiring somebody just not too far from you from Lockhart, Texas, I believe. Is where, wasn't that where Dr. Clark, Potter's from? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Lockhart. <laughs> okay. So uh, we would l really look forward to working with you. We think we have good contacts, and we will definitely recruit candidates. We won't just wait for the ones that apply. We will, we will put your name out there, and obviously a lot of candidates will apply. This is a great job. But we will also use our contacts to find the best people for the job, too. Well, doc, Dr. Parra was, the, was from Lockhart, and I, I called him uh, more than once trying to recruit him into uh, to apply for some jobs. You know, we, we hadn't interviewed him, but he was he came very highly uh, recruited. He 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 refused us on uh, everyone except uh, Irving, and then that's the one that he got the uh, superintendent's job at. But I know he was he was well thought of in Lockhart, and uh, we want to find you someone that's not looking to go somewhere, but who's happy where they are, and maybe we can persuade them to, you know, to come and, uh, and uh, interview me with you here in uh, Judson. <clears throat> uh, that when I, I like to tell the story about the profile. My daughter uh, didn't get married until uh, later in life. I mean, not like it was when Weldon and I were young. You know, you got out of high school and you got married, so to speak. And so she was uh, rather particular about what she was looking for in a husband. And she had literally a single-spaced typed list of characteristics. And she kept it in her Bible, and she prayed over it all the time. And one of the things on that list was Aggie. She wanted somebody to, that would be a season ticket holder, would be a 12th man foundation, go to the game. She loved, she loved her life at A&M, all five years of it. And, <clears throat> uh, but that's what she wanted. Well, 
she didn't get that. And when she got married and, you know, the father gets to get up and make the talk, I said, well, you know, they were, Ashley had all these things on the list, you know, and he didn't even make the number one. You know, and he looked like he was going to die, and I said, he's not even an Aggie. But he was the things that were important. He's a good father. He's a good provider. He's a good Christian. Those things that are really important, he is. And that's what we've got to find you is of those characteristics, we will, we will have a long list of things that everyone will want. But the key is, the, is finding those that are the most important and making sure that that person has those. Um, we could talk our full 20 minutes, but I think it'd be more important to let you ask the questions that you might want. Uh, okay. We do have some of the questions you've already answered, but we have to be consistent yes. with every firm, so you might just repeat your answers. Okay. So, and we will start, Ms. Pichelle. Thank you, Dr. Salinas, and thank you, uh, Richard. My first question is, um, you've answered it. The school board members rely on your expertise when selecting candidates for them to consider for interviews. How do you vet the applicants to ensure that school board members are truly reviewing applications of the highest quality of superintendent candidates? You're not just going to bring us your own slate of candidates for us. So, would you please repeat your answer? No, we don't have a slate. So it, we, we couldn't bring one if we wanted. Uh, now that's not to say that we haven't interviewed people. If you understand what I'm saying, we interviewed 15 people and some of those people are not a fit at Lake Worth, but we were extremely impressed with. And so there's going to come a job where that's the person for that job. Lake Worth's looking for, uh, and, and I don't think that <clears throat> it's a problem to say, they want an experienced superintendent. Straight across the board, no assistance, they want an experienced superintendent. So that eliminates a lot of candidates. But uh, yours will be different, but uh, as a service center director, I will call the other service center directors and say, okay, now we don't give away the profile, but you know, there's, you, can, you can say, we're looking for a really good decision maker, or we're looking for a person who can really relate to the community, or whatever. Who do you have that might fit that? And then we call them. And so, uh, and superintendents is a fraternity or a brotherhood or whatever you want. And so we call people that we've known all our lives or not all our, all our careers and so forth and say, what do you know about this person? Or, and, and I called on one today and uh, he said, oh my gosh, he is an embarrassment to the profession. Uh, that if you've got somebody that you know and you have a relationship with, they will tell you the truth. If you call, if you were to call one of them, most likely they would say, well, he worked here, um, he, uh, he liked kids, or she liked, if you understand what I'm saying. But, but we, work, we work the network, and so um, we feel very good, but we do check social media, and all of those other kinds of things we, we do. A, we used to require them to give us a criminal uh, history background. And that's become quite controversial. Uh, if you want us to do it, we'll do it again. But you know, that's become a, we required them to do that. Now, if you hire them, they're going to have to have that anyway, if you understand what I'm saying. But we used to require that. And we used to require uh, a, a, a personal financial statement. We want to make sure that they're solvent, if you understand what I'm saying. We would run a credit history check and those kinds of things. If they can't manage their own money, we don't think they can manage yours. And one thing I might add about the profile and that fits with your question is that part of our profile process is one of us will sit down with each of you for an hour or whatever time you have to allow to get you as an individual board member to tell us what you're looking for too. And that's very important. Sometimes those characteristics may be different as an individual versus a body. And so we like to do that. We find those very helpful in finalizing the profile. And you approve the final profile. You understand? We bring it back to you, and, and you bless it. 
and we take it with us because if you have it, it's public. But we take it, you know, we take it back. Good evening, I'm Suzanne Knoyer. Welcome, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, my question is, recently there's been a lot of discussion and media coverage on gender and ethnic inequities in superintendent positions, particularly here in San Antonio, that's been a big topic. We're aware that school boards make final decisions on candidates based on your firm's recommendations. Could you please share the gender and ethnic makeup of the last five candidates selected as superintendents from your firm? I need to look at my list <clears throat> to, to get it, I mean, to get in order. Um, the district that would be most comparison would be Irving. Ir Irving was Hispanic male. Um, let me see, Midlothian is a white male. I did not work Canyon, and I actually don't know uh, who went to Canyon. Cleburne is a white male. Garner is a white female. Lake Worth, we have a slate of variety there. Uh, Rockdale is a white female. Little Elm is a white male. Calhoun County, um, I'm looking. Flu Irving was Hispanic. Um, That's good. That's your more Okay. <laughs> How many searches is your firm currently involved in, and what stages are those searches in at the time, the beginning, middle, or end? Wednesday, we, prevent, we, pre, we <clears throat> meet with the board in Lake Worth, which is a suburb of Fort Worth, uh, about 3,500 kids, and we, we will present the demographics of the people, and we've got a couple of questions that we've got to go. Would you consider a retire rehire? As an example, and so that we will get that out, and when then we will we will thoroughly vet our final five. In other words, we have put ours in rank order of one through seven our, ourselves. Okay, in terms of qualifications and all of that. Uh, but now, when we give them to you, they're not rank ordered. If you understand what I'm saying, but we put ours, and so. When we come back, then we will do the, the full-scale background checks. We've talked to two or three people that we know about all of these, but we will do all of that, and I will, then we will come back in the last week in April and give them the notebooks that have all of the applications, all of the materials, the transcripts, the certificates, and all of that along, and we will also, so we're, we're basically through with Lake Worth, and it's the only one that we've got. But how many searches are you in right now? One. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm an old math teacher. When you say how many, I, I know I'm supposed to give a number for an answer. <laughs> uh, my wife and I have had many an interesting discussion over that. <clears throat> thank you. Mr. Macias? Yes, um, thank you as well for your time and coming down from Fort Worth. You did address this question as well during uh, your presentation. And um, we're looking at completion rates. So when you look at your, uh, your firm's search completion rate, um, how many of those superintendents are still in place after two years? Well, it depends how for it. How many are there after two years? Out of 280 something, uh, all but, I think it's five, were there two years. Uh, I, got, I got to think about that. We have had one person out of 280 something, now this goes back to, to 1986. We had one person that the board terminated. And we have had four or five that did not stay their full length of time, and unfortunately, three of those have been fairly recent. But they did, you know, one of them went from a district with 700 kids as associate superintendent with a district of 30,000 and became superintendent in a year. All right, one went from there to a, serv a, a service center director. Uh, so some of them made some really significant career moves, but <clears throat> When we end our 
personal interview, I slide a piece of paper across the desk and it's got two things on it. How much money would it take to get you to come to the district? And number two, I guarantee if I'm offered the job for that much salary, I will take it and I will stay the length of my first contract. And so we give them that. You will tell us what your maximum amount of money is. We will never divulge that. If they put a number down there more than that, we thank them. If they put a number down there less than that, we, you know, we just, we move forward. But we're guaranteeing you that when the person comes in here, if they, if you find the one that you like. Now we also tell them, if you interview and you don't feel like it's a fit, you may withdraw any time up to being named loan finalists, but you're not going to embarrass us or the district by trying to then, once you've got the hook, mm -hmm. negotiate more money or you're going to back out. And so, uh, you know, and that just happened uh, in a district uh, that I was once superintendent in. A uh, person came and they hired him. and clear they, we weren't the search firm. Well, we were not the search firm. <laughs> we were not the search firm, but that just, that just happened very recently in one of my... Uh, former districts, but we guarantee, you know, when when they will be here for that and they'll do it. So we've had what we call five failures. And, and just to elaborate, you did mention that there's a, you'll give us money back or do the search again and all that kind of yes. stuff. Yeah. Yes. And Lake Worth, where we're right now, was one of the ones that the person did not stay. And Dr. Griggs did the search again for the direct expenses uh, of it. Thank you. Ms. Rodriguez? So imagine that we have, um, we, we hire you, and we're, we've narrowed the search down to two finalists, but after discussing it with the board, it looks like it's going to be a split vote for either one. Um, what advice or suggestions would you give to the board um, to come to a finalist? Well, I don't know if I could, would term it advice, <laughs> but we've got to sit down and look at what are the differences. What is it that's really the hang-up? You know, and how can we, if at all, reconcile that? Uh, so, so we will, now we do not participate in the interviews. We, we give them to you, you interview them, you, you know what I'm saying, and all of that, and we will come back with, to you after you have picked someone, we will help you know you with the structure and the contract and all of those kinds of things. <clears throat> and we also will work with you prior to the interviews, you know, on the interview techniques and the questions and this, that, and the other. But I can't say that we we just try we do everything that we can to say what's the real difference. And it goes back to that list, like I've talked about with my daughter. What are the real things here that are hey, you must have? What are the what got to, you know nice to have, and I, I don't know what else to say. Do you uh, do you think you ought to tell them the general the way we ask them to reach consensus, or not what they're taught? They don't. Oh no. Well, well, we also we also certainly encourage you even if you have differences to vote unanimously. You know what I'm saying because. If you're 5'2", uh, now, that's not to say that we won't work with the candidate that you're loan finalists. If you're 5'2", and to say, you know, here it is, you know, uh, because that's, you put, if you've got 5'2", or you're 4'3", you, you bet you need to fix that because that's not going to change. And I, I was superintendent nine years in Santa Fe, and the same board member voted against me eight of the nine times. He voted for me one time. Uh, when I was hired, he voted against me. He voted against me every time for nine years, but generally he was the only vote. Uh, but, um, you know, you, you need to fix those. I have the last two questions, and you've answered this one, but I'm, I have to ask it. The school board and your firm have worked together to successfully, successfully select a superintendent and have agreed to a three-year term with a finalist. 
Is there any type of guarantee your firm offers in the event the superintendent does not successfully complete their contract? Yes. We give you your money back or we do it again. Yes. Now, I can't say, I, I can't speak. I asked by Dr. Griggs, I said, Dr. Griggs, you still have some holdovers over here. <clears throat> you know, so what happens if one of them leaves? You know, are you going to come out of retirement to do it? Or you can go, he said, <laughs> That's not going to happen, <laughs> meaning not going to have one that he has to. Right. <clears throat> we might mention about our, we won't recruit somebody. We oh, the, yes, very important. We will not recruit any candidate we have placed. Mm. We won't rob you, right. if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, now, if you, Madam President, were to contact me and say, our superintendent would like to go back, that's his home, this, that, and the other. We would like to see him, the, him and his family be able to get together. We, would you consider we would under those circumstances, but you would have to approach us. Got it. Now, and we also know that we think we know the difference in get rid of this guy, <laughs> and you may, uh, you may sure. consider him <laughs> or Thank her. Thank you. And I have the last question. Does your firm work with the school board to draft a contract for the loan finalist? Uh, not normally. We expect you will do that with your local attorney. Now, we will, we will work with you and advise you in any way, but our expectation is that you would do that with your local attorney. Okay. Great. Anyone else? Thank you so much for your time. Well, we thank you for allowing us to be here. I would like, with your permission, to give you a card. Absolutely. And uh, <clears throat> if you do select us, they want to come. You can call Dr. Rich would say at any time up until midnight, don't call me. Pastor <laughs> <laughs> 10, if you would, or before 8 in the morning for sure. I thought it was the way you have to go. All you got to do is. Okay, right. thank you. Be safe on the road. We will have that discussion tonight. We do have the option of waiting until the 19th, our next board meeting. So, but we might, we might tonight. It's on the agenda. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And, and Betty has been great to work with. Her. She is fabulous, yes. Betty, are you going to call the other? Okay, you're going to get them in. Okay. It wants to go too. We are ready. Okay. Ready for me to just come up and start. We will now start with TASB, Executive Search Services. All right. Well, my name is Marion Strauss, 
and I have Craig Stockstool with me this evening. Uh, I, we are with TASB, and we are really happy to be here this evening. Greetings from TASB. Some of you probably saw uh, Jim and, uh, and even Robert probably at the, uh, at the conference this, uh, this weekend. Uh, but greetings from them. I know they're probably recuperating from all of that, but um, we're happy to be here. And both of us are retired superintendents. Uh, I spent 24 years in the superintendency and 34 years in education. I've uh, been everywhere pretty much in the state of Texas and most recently at Pine Tree ISD, which is in East Texas. I was there as superintendent but um, in Wimberley as well, whereas where I live, uh, I still live in Wimberley. But I spent time in the Panhandle and in Central Texas, close to Bryan College Station, and uh, in Lavaca County, where I grew up near Shiner, Texas. So this area is, uh, is really home, and Craig lives in New Braunfels, and he too is a retired superintendent and has been in this area for a long time as well, and it's had several superintendencies in the San Antonio area, Floresville, Marion, uh, Region, 20. Region 20, worked for Region 20. So that's a little bit about us, and again, we're, we're really happy to be here. <clears throat> as you know, this decision is going to be the most important decision that you're going to make in your tenure on the board. And it is your decision, it's not anybody else's, this is what you have been elected to do, is to make this decision. So with TASB, uh, what we, I work for Executive Search Services, which is a division of TASB that does superintendent searches. So this is what I do full time. Craig works for Field Services, so this district, Judson ISD, is one of his, uh, one of his schools, and I'll, add a little bit about field services in a minute. But with us and our searches, uh, if you were to choose us, the basic principles that we, uh, that we abide by is that you're in charge. The board, is, the board is in charge of the search. You're going to see all the applicants. We're not going to hand pick the top applicants and only sh give you those top applicants. Now, we can do that, but we prefer not to. And uh, we have found that boards have a sixth sense, usually, when they see the applications and see the materials that applicants present. Sometimes they see things in those applications that really pertain and really speak to them about the needs that they have in their district. Uh, if you would like, we often will submit with the applications the list that we believe are your top 10 or so uh, candidates, and we don't mind doing that at all. But you, most of the time, uh, the board will see all the applicants that apply. We're going to help you select those that you will interview, and I will tell you every search with us is new. We don't move any applications into a search uh, they were here and then they get moved into another. When it's posted, when Judson ISD is posted, anyone that wants to apply has to begin their application uh, for Judson ISD new and, and uh, choose to apply. We represent your perspective. We don't represent the superintendents looking for positions out there. We represent the school board. Every school board in the state of Texas is a member of TASB, and so we represent the perspective of the school board. We're more experienced than any search firm in the state of Texas. We've been doing this since 1984, and to date we have done almost 700 searches in that time. I've been working for TASB for seven, six years, uh, going on seven years, and I have done many searches. I don't know, I've kind of lost count, but probably close to 40 searches in that amount of time. We're the only search firm that is going to have personal knowledge of every applicant. 
And now I'll add about field service. We have 10 field service representatives that cover the entire state of Texas. As Craig walks into your district about once a quarter and visits with Dr. Montoya, we have nine other field service agents who walk into every district in the state of Texas and visit with every superintendent in the state of Texas about once a quarter. So we know every superintendent here. Not only do we know this, the, uh, are we able to have a really good feeling for the sitting superintendents, but also their assistant superintendents or the deputy superintendents or those people that are up and coming. I call them stars, the ones that are coming into the system that want to be uh, superintendents. And so we have a really good feel for that as well. Because of all of the school board associations in the United States, your search becomes a national search automatically. Both Butch, my director, Butch Felkner, which many of you know, and I are members of the National Association of Superintendent Searchers, and he's the past president. We actually had a meeting Saturday here at, NS, uh, at NASB, and um, when we have a search, it becomes uh, advertised through all of the sister organizations. If they have searches, uh, we advertise for them. Also, any candidates that may apply, and you will have many that apply from out of state, uh, we pick up the phone and we talk to our out of state uh, uh, colleagues and we get very good, very truthful, very insightful information about any of the out-of-state candidates. Uh, and they do the same with us if, they, if we have candidates that apply with them. So we feel very good about that. You're gonna get the whole team with TASB. You not only get ESS and field service, but you get our HR division because we're gonna bring you the latest salary and benefits information. You're gonna get our legal division because everything we bring you has passed legal muster with our legal division. And um, also LTS is part of our search because we have a transition session that LTS gets involved with and I'll talk about that in a minute. And everything is done electronically. So we're going to uh, use our Applitrack system and we're gonna send you all of the applications and information electronically. We're gonna do the work. Uh, we are going to gather and display, advertise, do all of that, all of the administrative work. Um, we're going to post everything. We're going to verify all the information. Most, of, most importantly, we're going, to, we're going to check the references. And we're not just going to check the references listed, but we're going to check the references that are not listed as well. And we're going to use our people to do that, to help us with that. Uh, we're going to continuously support your people here. We're not going to ask them to put anything additional on their plates here in the district because everybody has enough work to do. And so we're going to continuously support them. We may ask them to make a few copies for us once in a while before a board meeting, but that would be the extent of it. And we're always going to be there after the search. Uh, most of you I have seen numerous times at either SLI, convention, uh, winter governance, in our sessions, and so we're gonna always be there when the search is over. You're gonna continue to see us after the search is over. Part of our search process is to engage your community, and I know that's probably gonna be really important to you, so we bring a team in, uh, Probably several of us would come in for a few days, several days, and sit down with the stakeholders in your community. And we'll meet with you to decide who those groups are. Usually it's faculty, staff, administrators, uh, community at large. You may want us to meet with some of your student leadership. Uh, there's uh, community leaders, if there's a, uh, a ministerial alliance, there's all different groups that we can meet with. But we come in and we talk to them about what's, what's important to them, both what's going well in the district, what their concerns are about the district, and then we ask them what it is that they want in the next leader in the school district. We scribe all of that information and we bring it back to you in a report. Uh, 
if they cannot come uh, in person and talk to us, we have an online survey that anyone that, that would like to respond can, uh, can respond uh, there online. And it's web-based, it, it would be uh, attached to your district's web page, and all of the information comes directly back to us. So it becomes part of the report that we bring back to you as well. We're gonna ask you all to sign a confidenti confidentiality agreement we believe that the best candidates are those that have great jobs, that are not looking for jobs, uh, that may be the ones that we call and say, have you taken a look at Judson? Uh, we'd like for you to just consider it. We don't strong arm anyone, but we, we do uh, call people. And um, we would like for them to, f we know our people, when we call, we know that they know that it's confidential and that they won't have to worry about it getting back to their community that they applied for the position. So we ask you to sign a confidentiality oath just saying that you're going to keep it confidential as well. Uh, we will help you develop the questions. We have a bank of about 80 questions that our attorneys have uh, looked at and, um, and so we will help you develop any questions and pick your questions that you will use during your interview. Uh, process and um, we're going to be there for you to help you narrow again we have a very specific process that helps you narrow the the candidates down to the six or so that you'll interview first round and then we come back and help you narrow those six down to the top three or so that you'll want to talk to uh, second round and our second round interviews involve the spouse so we think that's an important part of your community is the spouse of the, of the leader. And so we involve them in the second round, just short social at the beginning so that you get to meet them. Uh, you will get three hours of board training during the meeting where you uh, select your candidates for interview. And then there's a transition session that we have recently implemented that is uh, during the first 90 days, of your new superintendent being here, actually within the first month, LTS will come in and conduct a transition session where you take the time to actually sit down with the new superintendent and talk about those things that are important to talk about before everybody gets so busy that you just don't take the time to do it. So you talk about short-term goals, first 30 days, uh, first 90 days, what you want them to accomplish in that time, and then what you're going to evaluate them on during their first evaluation. And we believe that that has made a tremendous difference in everybody getting off on the right foot and on the right page, and then in the success, in the tenure success as well, and just uh, having those discussions that need to be had that people just don't really take the time to do. So that is at no cost, which usually you know how much TASB sessions with LTS are, or it can be kind of pricey, but um, we do that. It's just uh, expenses only for, it's usually Oren. If you know Oren more, he's the one that comes in and does that. We're going to continue until you're satisfied. Uh, if you, uh, and that, never happens where we have to reopen the search. We make sure that we have the candidates that fit so we don't have to do that, but we're gonna continue until you're satisfied. If your new superintendent leaves within the first two years for any reason other than a family emergency, we will come back and do the search at no cost, just expenses only. Our price is based on your ADA. It's in your materials, I think it's 13.6, and it includes everything, all of our travel, our expenses. There's no additional cost other than if you do a site visit, which is part of the process, that would be at the district's expense. And then the second round interview that I talked about um, where you bring the candidate back, you're inviting usually three back for a second round. It is customary for the district to pay the expenses of the candidate. And so that's the only other additional cost. But everything else is, is, um, is included, all the advertising, everything. So in summary, uh, 
We are the most experienced in the state. And again, we know every superintendent in the state of Texas. And we, there is no one in this nation that we can't reach out to and get good, really good information about. And we're going to represent your best interest. Um, we don't get to go on vacation because we got to do Judson. It's not, <laughs> it's not about um, uh, us. It, it, it goes back to, your fee goes back to TASB and back to public schools and supporting the programs that you go to uh, when you're getting your education. So I think that's the difference. It's not, you know, TASB's nonprofit and your fee goes back to supporting that and we all know that that's an important part of what's going on today. So with that, we'll take questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first question, uh, let me just say thank you very much for being here. Our first question you've answered, but I'd like to, for the record, ask it again. Sure. School board members rely on your expertise when selecting candidates for them to consider for interviews. How do you vet the applicants to ensure that school board members are truly reviewing applications of the highest quality of superintendent candidates? I will tell you that's probably what we spend most of our time on. If I'm not at a board meeting, I am on the phone uh, vetting candidates uh, in every way possible. And you all know with social media, it's pretty easy to put somebody's name in and find out a lot of things. And then you have to, you have to decide how much of that is true or not true these days. So we talk to, again, references, but we also talk to the people that we know they probably had some, uh, some dealing with at some point in their career. And again, we rely heavily on our field service. We, we talk to them. They make a lot of in-person um, visits and talk to people in person. And they're a great assistance to us. And so we do everything possible to find out uh, everything that we possibly can. And then we bring that information to you. When it's time for you to narrow that down, your applicants down to the six or so, we're not gonna hold anything back. Uh, I, I call it the good, the bad, and the ugly. When, when we're talking about candidates, we're gonna have information about every single person that applied. And we're gonna tell you what we know about those people. And if we know something, we're not going to let you um, go down a path that we know would not be uh, advantageous to this district. And so we're going to share information with you. Everything. Everything. Good evening, thank yes. you so much for coming. I'm Suzanne Kenoyer, mm -hmm. and I have the honor of the next question. Okay. Um, <laughs> Recently, there's been a lot of discussion and media coverage on gender and ethnic inequities for superintendent positions. We're aware that school boards make final decisions on candidates based on your firm's recommendations. Can you please share the gender and ethnic makeup of the last five candidates selected as superintendents from your search, search firms? Jeez. Um, the last five, that's putting me on the spot because um, I will just tell you that our, our, um, our pools are more diverse than they've ever been now. And, um, and we have placed, if you will look at your reference list that we provided, um, Waco, of course, was an African-American male. And then the other, I know I put, because I, I did the RFP, so I'm, I'm remembering. So in Bryan College Station was a female that we, uh, that was placed in, in Bryan. And um, Sherman was the assistant superintendent from Denton ISD. Uh, so he, that was uh, white. And then Seguin uh, was a Hispanic male. So I think uh, as far as diversity is concerned, uh, we are very aware of it. However, you know, we, we encourage, and I think, I think if you talk to our candidates, they would say the same thing, is that they, uh, everyone is treated exactly, in fact, to the point where when they schedule their interviews, 
we have it online, we do it online now so that there is absolutely, it, it's all first come first serve. So everyone is treated equally and equitably and, and uh, we encourage, uh, we encourage the diversity in our in our candidate pool, and and I am having been a, a female superintendent when there were 14 of us in the state. I am thrilled to see how many candidates we have. We're still not there uh, as far as numbers, but but it's it's improved tremendously. Dr. Strauss, can I add one thing? Sure. I think one thing. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying if you look at our application and, and information, we have the most diverse group that you could find doing searches in the state. And TASB itself is a very diverse organization and values that um, tremendously from the top down. Yes. I get the next one. Sure. How many searches is your firm currently involved in and what stages are those searches in at this time? Beginning, middle, or end? We are involved in, a, I think right now we're probably involved in five, and they are all either middle or end. Uh, we're involved in a search that is very similar to the size of your district right now, but it is at the final stages, and that's uh, Carrollton Farmers Branch. Uh, they are ending. They're about to uh, um, pick their candidates to interview. So we are, uh, we're at the, at the ending stage of, um, of uh, the five searches that we're doing currently. We just finished a college search, our first college search at Weatherford College. So that was an interesting um, undertaking, but um, we're, again, they're all at the tail end, either middle or tail end. Thank you again for making time to be out here. And I actually saw you at Cube in New Orleans recently. Yes, so. we did. That's right, we did. So you are everywhere, as you mentioned earlier. <laughs> uh, what is your firm's uh, search completion rate, and how many of those superintendents are still in place after two years? Our completion rate is 100%. I mean, from when we get a cert, when we uh, are hired, then we complete. Um, we complete every search that we're hired to do. Our, our uh, retention rate is about 93% of our superintendents are on the job after three years, and about 84% of our superintendents are on the job after five years. And we believe, and we, we're very proud of that, and we keep up with that every year, and we believe that's because we work really hard to make sure that we have, we have candidates that are gonna be good fits with the board and with, for the district, because every district is very different, and as you know, every board is different. And um, getting to know all of you and knowing you, uh, finding the right candidates that, that are good fits is, is extremely important. And I take that very seriously and uh, will reach out to those people that I believe will be a good fit here. And I think that's why our retention rate is as high as it is, 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 as, high as, as it is. We never, and I know you, you heard me say that we will call and and uh, encourage people to take a look at it. After we place someone, we don't touch them for at least three years. And we tell the boards that. We do not have contact and, you know, we, we call them to see how they're doing or if they need anything, but we do not try to uh, recruit them out of their district for at least three years. And if, you know, that doesn't mean they won't apply, but we're not going to encourage that. We want them to stay. Mm -hmm. I needed to drink water. First. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, imagine we do hire you and um, we've narrowed the search down to two finalists. Um, but after some discussion with the board, it looks like either finalist could result in a split vote. Um, so what advice or suggestions would you offer the school board 
um, and or the potential finalists to overcome that? We would work ahead of time to make sure we get, when we get to that point, we don't have a split vote. Um, you know, from the day one of, of starting the search, we're going to talk about being a unanimous vote at the end, being a 7-0 vote when we get to the end of the, of the search process. And throughout the entire uh, discussion, when we're selecting candidates to interview, you will hear me say, if there is anyone in this list that you can't support when it's time to raise your hand and vote to hire them, then we need to talk about that now. And Craig's heard me say it over and over and over because we need to get that out of the way early. And by doing that, when it's time to actually vote to hire or vote to name a loan finalist, we don't have, we don't have split votes. Um, I can't remember the last time I've had a split vote, and if we had a split vote, it's maybe a 6-1, and that's just someone being stubborn, I think. Mm -hmm. So we get past that early on. And, th and it's okay to say, I can't support that person. It's okay. And then we need to take them off the table because bottom line is this community deserves someone that they know all of you can support. Otherwise, you're putting, you're putting that whole process at risk and you're putting that person in a situation where they, they're already, uh, they've already started some unsuccessful uh, things starting to happen for them. And so it's very important that we get the unanimous vote. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> if you trust the process, the process works. I, I have been, I, I'm old enough to remember the old process when your college professor would call you and say, I want you to go interview at Marion, Texas, and you're, you know, you're probably going to be one of three and you may be offered the job. That's how I got to be Marion, Texas. But in our process, it's an open process. Everybody sees all the applications. We don't have a stable. And so we're able to be consensus builders. We come in and listen to everything that everyone has to say and we talk about hiring the Judson board superintendent, not Craig's superintendent, not Marion's superintendent, not individual board members. And it really works and I've seen it very many and Marion is excellent at doing that. And I, I do, I will tell you, I know you're a good board, I know you're a strong board, but through our process you become an even stronger, better board. And there is a lot of compromise that goes on through the process, but it just makes you stronger in the end, so. I have the last two questions and you've answered this first one. Um, the school board and your firm have worked together to successfully select a superintendent and have agreed to a three-year term with the finalist. Is there any type of guarantee your firm offers in the event the superintendent does not successfully complete their contract? Yes, and, and again, we will come back. If they leave for any reason in the first two years, we will come back and, and redo the search at no cost. Um, and, um, and we, of course, don't like to do that. And uh, we rarely have to do that. Um, but uh, I'm not going to say it never, ever happens because, um, you know, you know, sometimes, but I, I can only say of one time in five years that that has happened. And it was one of those things where, uh, you know, we, I kind of saw it before it ever happened, but sometimes you can lead them, <laughs> but you can't, you can't make them, uh, you know, it's one of those things. The board, the board it is your decision. We're not going to tell you who to hire. You're going to do that. We're going to guide and direct you. So, um, but we will be here for you throughout the process, and then we'll be here if, if it should that happen. And the last question is: Does your firm work with the school board to draft a contract for the loan finalists? We have. Um, we have a. Our of course we have a whole um, uh, contract reference guide that TASB provides to all of their districts. And so what we have done is we have negotiated um, and you'll, uh, when, when the board picks its person of interest, they have a very clear understanding of what the salary and benefits are going to be because we lead them through that process. And so we don't want it, we don't want there to be any guesswork 
when you get to the point of having your one person of interest and naming your loan finalist, you will know what the salary and benefits are. Uh, and then you have the 21 days to negotiate the rest of the contract, which is usually pretty simple. And so we help with that negotiation. However, your, your attorney will, or, or the district's attorney will help draft that contract if you're not happy with the current contract that you have. Most districts have a contract in place that they have used, that they're happy with. If you're not, then, then a contract will have to be drafted. We have the, uh, the, uh, the basic contract uh, available to you as a district, but we do not draft the contract per se in all its entirety. <coughs> Anything else? It has been a pleasure to uh, come in and talk to y'all, and um, I have cards. And thank you both so much for your time this oh, evening. It's easy for us. We must close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yes. do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. See you at one of them soon. Thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> I got their high sign from our gentleman. Oh. Today, so. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's only because I was pushing 200 real hard. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. I think it was. Mm -hmm. That happens. Yes, it does. But thank you for being here. Sure. So we've allotted 20 minutes, and then we have a series of questions that we're each going to ask. Sounds good. Okay. We're going to try to give you some change back, if we can, okay. because I know you're running late. You don't want to be here, be here all evening. You know who I am, but you don't know about our law firm's involvement in searches. Um, so
since the firm opened in 1983, we have often helped school boards when they were choosing a new superintendent. But about five years ago now, some of our clients said, hey, you help us when we work with search firms, but can you just do the search for us? And so we checked, did some checking and talked among <coughs> ourselves and um, made some relationships with some partners that have helped us so that now for our clients who want us to, we can do a full, a full service search if you'd like. And we do that with an education consultant partly because you know, our firm represents about 500 school districts in the state of Texas. And so some of the information that we know about your applicants, we can't share with you because mm -hmm. it's attorney-client privileged. And so we needed to find a way for you all to get that information, which you need to receive in making a decision. And that's why we use an education consultant in our searches. I want to tell you kind of what sets us apart from other search firms because I know you're talking to some other groups. Um, I think you'll find that our searches are more board driven. Some of the searches that you and firms that you talk to have kind of a cookie cutter search. Here's the kind of search that we do and <clears throat> we want Judson to fit into that mold. What Walsh Gallegos does is we design the search with you guys. You tell us how you want it to work, and there's parameters, of course, legal parameters that we work within. But the search itself is really board driven. Uh, I put in the application packet a sample timeline, but that is nothing but a sample. That is just to give you an idea of here is how it could look. Mm -hmm. Here is how a timeline might work. But if you were to select our firm to do the search, you would actually design that, even that timeline yourselves and what steps you want to take along the way. And so we're different in, from other search firms in that way in that you would have a lot of input in how this search looks. The other way that we're different is we don't have a stable of superintendent applicants that we're looking for helping get jobs. Um, we literally put out a job posting and asked people to apply and I was just checking with Mr. Patterson. We looked at the list of about, we've placed about 18 superintendents now. And I think I had known one of the 18 before. And so if that is not evidence, we are, we are not looking, we don't have some preconceived notion of who we want Judson to hire for your superintendent. And so we feel like you will get to look freshly at the applicants as we do when you receive them. We also, and I think this sets us apart from other searches, we don't want you to have any surprises. If we can help it, by the time you name a loan finalist, we want you to know everything good, bad, and ugly about that person. And I think it, it sets us apart from other search firms, the, the amount of vetting. Mr. Patterson's going to talk a little bit about the vetting that we do for our candidates. One of the things that we talked about in the application packet, if you read it, is there's a, a vendor that we use that we partnered with once we start had clients that wanted us to help do their full search called American Data Bank. And they have a, a menu listing of all kinds of background checking that they can do on our behalf upon the request of the board. And so in some of the searches that we've done, our boards have wanted not only the traditional criminal background, which you're legally required to do, but some of our, our boards really want to have a credit history done uh, because obviously your superintendent is dealing with a very large budget just to make sure that in their personal life they don't have any issues that might cause you concern. And then another really popular check that the American Data Bank can do is verifying degrees. You guys may remember here in San Antonio a while back there was kind of an embarrassing um, situation where an applicant was named as a loan finalist and they didn't have the degrees that they held out to have, have achieved. And so some of our clients have liked that option that American Data Bank can choose. The credit history can be uncomfortable for some people. Um, there are legal requirements to do a credit history, and there we have to have a contract with American Data Bank, which we have in place. And you have to get the permission of the applicants before you run any of this background checking. 
we put that as a part of our application process. And then if the board makes a decision not to move forward with a particular applicant because of the credit history, there's a legal notification that, that has to go to that person. And we do that on behalf of the district. And so some of your applicants, it's, it's uh, not commonly done by a lot of search firms, and some of your applicants may be uneasy about it, but we certainly know how to do it legally if it's something that the board would like for us to do. And <clears throat> I mentioned to you, we use our education consultants to fill that vetting role. They're the primary liaison with the applicants. And the consultant that we're recommending to Judson is Gary Patterson, who I'm going to let you hear from here in a minute. You all may know that he was a longtime superintendent of East Central School District here in town. I think at last count you have 24 years. He was a superintendent before that, and now he has served as an interim superintendent a number of times. And so he's a very experienced superintendent, beloved in East Central. In fact, he just, he will not like me to say this, but he was just surprised by his former school, school district and notified that they are naming their brand new, beautiful, state-of-the-art performing arts center after him. And so that kind of tells you how they feel about Gary Patterson. But we've had the pleasure of working with him in several searches, and I want you to hear from him what all um, he does, how he interacts with the applicants, and how he makes sure you don't have any surprises. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Paige. Trustees, Madam President, uh, thanks for having us tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. Been neighbors for a long, long time. Had all the battles through middle school, you know, athletics and academics all through the years. It's always been a pleasure. I, your former superintendents, uh, I worked with most of them, all the way back to Dr. Z. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it's, it's been a good relationship across the interstate for years, and it's a pleasure to be here tonight. I know that uh, search firms have several things in common, and you look for things to set each other apart. And I'll talk about a little bit of both, if you don't mind, for just a minute. But as my role as the application, as we post uh, for the, the opening, um, we immediately, I immediately let out my email and cell phone uh, numbers to, to the firm. And as, as interest comes in, the phone calls, as you might uh, expect, would start to come in, emails and phone calls. And so we try to start establishing a uh, relationship with people right away, answer their questions about the district. So if, you, if we were lucky enough to get hired for this uh, search, one of the first things I would do would be ask, to ask you uh, to put me in touch with someone in the district that could show me around a little bit about some of the qualities of facilities and talk to some of the principals to get a better feel. So when the, when the applicants call us, the more I can share with them about, because that's what they want to know. Their first questions in no particular order are, uh, how does the board get along? What the salary and benefits could be? And then we get in, they have questions about the district. You know, do they need a bond issue? How are their facilities? You know, what their community demographics? Are there any issues? So the more that I know about that, the more we can dialogue and they can be better prepared. And so can I when we, when we get to the point where we start selecting candidates for interviews. So that process starts right away. And uh, some will want to make, if they're not local, will make, like to make the effort to come down and meet face to face where they can share more information and I'm always open to that if they want to make the effort to come down and have a cup of coffee or uh, just a lot of them like to present themselves and, and talk and think that gives them a better inside track and all of that and so I already encourage that if they want to do that I make time to do that because if you ask about them as you look at their application the more I know about that candidate the more I can share with you about that because the applications tell a tell a certain story, but it's very consistent. It's a fairly consistent story. So the more we know about them, the more we can share. There's all uh, a popular um, avenue now for boards to consider is gathering community input, of course, being transparent, asking the community for input. And we found that uh, our online surveys have been very uh, productive in gathering input, and people seem to, and they're busy, uh, busy life, uh, like to do things online, maybe then to make a trip to a central location to provide some input. So 
our community surveys and uh, the last two searches that I've been actively involved with with Walsh uh, I have been in Pflugerville, which is similar size to y'all, about 25,000 students, and then uh, most recently in Lavernia. But the online surveys have produced hundreds of people uh, in both places to provide input for the board to consider. And we also offer a community or a staff forum where we'd send in a central location and offer a three or four hour window for people to come by and offer input to the board if that's an avenue that the board wants to consider for community or staff input. And as Paige mentioned, we don't want any surprises. Uh, and the only people that don't want any surprises more than we is you. <laughs> you don't want surprises. So we also do a, a Google search and look and uh, to see if there's anything that could be embarrassing to the Board of Trustees. And then Paige talked about the other uh, areas with uh, transcript and resume <laughs> verification as well as uh, criminal background checks. There have been some very, very embarrassing things happen, not only in our community, but across the country. And we just want to do everything we can to prevent the board from getting in that type of situation. This is important work. I mean, I don't have to tell you that, but I will say that in my profession, it is equally as important. It's, it, you know, to public education, the, the, to, to find the right fit <coughs> for success for you and the candidate is the most important work I think we all can do. So take it very serious. I take it personally, you know, it affects my personal reputation and, and I don't do any work now that's not affiliated with Walsh or their reputation as well. And it's just a serious business and, and I want you to know that we take it as such. Uh, and then I'll just close with saying, you know, every board that I've ever worked with, uh, if I asked what you wanted with the superintendent, if I just asked you right now, I'm sure you would say some things common to almost every board. You know, you want uh, someone who's visible and who will listen and is a good communicator. And, you know, there's a common checklist that everybody wants. But each community is unique. And Judson is unique. And so what I would want to know and spend time with you is what are those unique needs that you have? You know, there's maybe some internal things that we don't know about and the specific needs that you have. And what are those needs? And then what can we do to find the personality and the expertise and the leadership to fit those needs? Because that's what's different is you're different. You know, you're not the same. We've done searches with Fall City who have a, 150 kids in all 12 grades. And then with Pflugerville with 25,000. You know, it's not the same. You know, they don't need the same thing. And our applications and resumes, you know, are hard to, you know, to, to disseminate sometimes. It's, they're very, and so what's behind those? What can we find out? And what are your unique needs that we can help you with? So we would spend some time right off the bat working with you to find out what that is to try to find the best match possible. So I'm not going to take up much more of your time. I mean, uh, I'm glad to be here. This is a really nice place. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, I'm glad. To, well, I never made it here. I made it to all the auditoriums, performance arts centers, a lot of the campuses, ball games and gyms and all that, but uh, never made it to the boardroom. That's probably a good thing. So it's nice to be here. I want to thank you for your time. And if you have any questions for me, I know you'll ask when Paige uh, wraps it up here. Just a couple more points I wanted to make, and then we'll be happy to take your questions. In addition to the American Data Bank vetting, the other thing that Mr. Patterson will do with every applicant that you receive, he will do a pre-screening. He will talk to the people and make some notes that he can then share with you all when you review their applications. And we'll, of course, ask every applicant to list some references but in addition to the references that they list, one of the ways that we selected Gary Patterson is he's well connected throughout the state. And so he has people he can call on wherever the, these applicants are coming from just to check the backstory to, to get a thorough reference on those folks. And we do that, of course, with the applicant's knowledge. And so he, not only does he interact with the applicants so that he can give you some feedback as an educator, but he also calls some of his contacts throughout the state 
once y'all narrow your list on who you want to consider. And then the thing I wanted to close with is that sample timeline that I included in your packet is a very aggressive timeline. It's by no means necessary that the board move that quickly. As I mentioned, you all can work on that, set your own timeline and decide when you want this process to take place. But if you are eager to get started, um, before we post the job, there are just a few questions we would need to ask the board. And, and Gary and I are prepared to do that tonight or however soon you would like to get started. Um, just so you know, the job could be posted after about 20, probably 20 minutes of interaction there. We have a basic list of questions we would need to ask the board before we could get the job posted. And so if the board was in a particular hurry or wanted to expedite the search, I just wanted to let you know that. And now we're happy to take your questions. Thank you, Ms. Kyle. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Um, you've answered most all the questions that we, that we have, but I think probably one of the most important questions to us is about the vetting of the applicants. Sure. You know, we, you know it's, it's just probably the most significant. And uh, I'd like for you to go back over that once again, please, Mr. Patterson. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, for, I forgot to say one thing uh, when we talk about uh, the important work we do. We do share information, I mean, with other, they may not like for me to say this, but I know uh, Craig Stockstill is a friend of mine, and uh, you, uh, for whatever reason, um, Aero uh, Educational Services was one of the firms you considered. Uh, they called Gary. Yeah, they, uh, Rusty Marshall is head of that, and Rusty and I go all the way back to junior high together, so, you know, you didn't want him anyway, so it was a good <laughs> program. So. But my point being that, uh, you know, we're all in this business together. So if, if, I, if we work with a candidate that Arrow is now doing a search and this candidate pops up and Rusty calls me, I'm going to share that information with him and he's going to share it with me. So after a period of time, you know, some, we know some common candidates. We share that information. You know, we call and say, Craig, you know, this person applied for this job and I know you worked, you know, there was, you interviewed him and such and such and what can you... So, the service center people, I know somebody in almost every service center that we have, and if they come from that region of the state, we can call. And, and, and those people may or may not be listed on the reference sheet is, I think, what we're getting to. And so we want to see if we can find out if there's issues uh, with that superintendent that are positive or negative, then the people at the service center are going to share that information because it's in the benefit of our school children all over the state. So uh, I think there's contacts that we have around, but, you know, you're not a very good applicant if you can't list some references of people that say really good things about you, right? I mean, you shouldn't list them as a reference yeah, if they're, if they're not going to say positive things about you. And we all know that. And most of the references that they, they, they list for you to call, they may be a letter accompanying their packet with that person, so you kind of already know what they're going to say. So it is, uh, we're obligated to try to go beyond that best we can. Uh, in the in the networks that we have, or the service centers, or other areas, people we know to try to get as page reference to the backstory. And in addition to that, excuse me, they, that there we'll do a Google search. That's very time consuming. Uh, there's a there's a service that we've used the very minimum cost that uh, that are. There, it's some kind of dark web something. So, you know, you can punch a button and it searches, you know, databases all over for, for this particular person and then can report back to us as well any negative things if, if we need to, to do that as well at a really reasonable cost. So that's available as well. I have the next question. Um, Recently, there's been a lot of discussion and media coverage on gender and ethnic inequities for superintendent positions. We're aware that school boards make final decisions on candidates based on your firm's recommendations. Can you please share any gender and ethnic makeup of the last candidates, um, the last five candidates that were selected as superintendents that your firm conducted? I sure can. Let me look at my cheat sheet here. 
let's say the last two, three searches, um, females were hired. Two of those were African American females, and one was, um, I mean, two were Hispanic and one was African American. And so um, we do have some diversity among the applicants that we've placed recently. Um, actually, looking back, Pflugerville did hire um, an Anglo male, but Sweeney and Community, yeah, and Santa Gertrudis mm -hmm. hired yeah. African Americans. Beeville was Hispanic, uh, Hispanic male. Hispanic male. And so we, we've... Uh, Lavernia that's, was an uh, Anglo male that mm -hmm. just closed last, well, it's been a couple weeks, I guess. So. Um, that is something that our clients, our school districts that we've worked with, have, have made a concerted effort to certainly consider seriously diverse applicants. And as a result, several... Um, Minorities have been hired in our recent searches. And so, some search firms are not real uh, anxious to talk about what I'm about to say, but it doesn't bother me at all. The the number of applicants that you can expect and it, it does it does vary from the time of year, and some uh, it could have some impact, but anywhere from 25 to 50 max, you know, you're going to be in that range somewhere, probably. Um, 40 to 50 percent of those right away are, are possibly someone that you're not going to seriously consider. There'll be applications from people who are not even in education at all um, or that don't don't meet your minimum qualifications even after you exactly. set them and and there's just a lot of, of of applications that we will bring them all to you and uh, you'll have every opportunity to review every application that's there but there's just some that you're going to find that 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 don't there's a certain percentage that you're not going to take seriously is is basically the bottom line but we take it very seriously that that each group that's presented should be a diverse group so we will, uh, um, there will be just, I, I refer to it sometimes like cheerleading tryouts, because everybody's familiar with cheerleading tryouts. Whether you want to be familiar with them or not, you are. <laughs> and so there's a, there's a break, if you know how that works, right? You've got lots of people trying out, but there's a break somewhere where the most talented people through judges, you know, uh, there's just a break. And it's the same way with the search as well. There, there's, there's a break. Hopefully it's at 15 to 20 really highly qualified people that you'd be happy to have. But it might not be that many, or it could be more. And so uh, it should be a diverse group, and we take that very seriously. And it usually is a diverse group, male and female, as, where, as well as minority candidates as well. And I know from working with Gary, he actively recruits applicants. If a particular district doesn't have as many, um, say, women apply, he, he goes out and shakes the bushes and tries to get additional applicants to apply for a job. But I would like to emphasize what Paige said earlier. Most of these searches, the candidates that are in the finals, we haven't, we haven't most known. times we have not crossed paths before. Mm -hmm. And, and it, I don't have friends out there that I that I can call uh, and say, hey, you know, if we come apply for this job. If, if I know of candidates that I think are really good. Through searches. Through searches or through contacts, then yes, we'll reach out to those people. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a, a list of friends. And all my friends are retired. <laughs> retired or fired, that's where we are at this point in our careers, yeah. How many searches is your firm currently involved in, and what stages are those searches in at this time? Beginning, middle, or end? Only two, I think. Yeah, and no. one in Lavernia, y'all have We just finished. Oh, that. he came to work already. He did. And so, actually, just Kennedy is the only one that we have going on and, right and, now. And I'm not involved. I'm not uh, involved in our Kennedy. Our other search consultant is working on that one with Tony Resendez. 
Thank you. I have the hardest question. I like oh, no. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, what is your firm's uh, search completion rate, and how many of those superintendents are still in place after two years? We've never not completed a search. We've always placed someone, and looking back at the list, one of our early um, placements was an African-American female, and she was placed at a district, uh, Lamarck ISD, that ended up being shut down by the state. And so we don't like to claim that as a failure <laughs> on that one. Um, we have had a couple of superintendents that aren't there anymore. Uh, uh, only one that I'm aware of, and that was at, at Kennedy. There may only be one besides uh, her. Kennedy uh, superintendent, um, that didn't work out. And then uh, Rungi didn't end up staying. And you know, okay. sometimes it's not the fault of the search. Sometimes it's the fault of the superintendent. You know, something <laughs> happens that we can't anticipate. We can't speak, of course, about these specific situations, the reason. Um, but, and, and sometimes, although I don't think it was in either of these cases, it's something about the board that has changed. It may be a board election, but I don't think either of those really was a reflection of the board. But all the rest are still standing. In fact, the very first one we, we placed was in August 2013, and he's still there at the Hennis ISD. Actually, a large number of them. One of them early on was Cedar Hill ISD, an African-American male, and after three years, he took another position at a larger district. You know, sometimes superintendents move for career reasons, uh, but many of our placements are actually still in place. That's our goal, certainly. Sorry, I was writing my notes and sure. I'm next. Okay. Um, so, uh, this, imagine that you have uh, that we've hired you to do this search and we've narrowed it down to two finalists um, but after some discussion with the board it seems that um, either finalist could result in a split vote mm -hmm. um, so what advice or suggestions would you offer to the school board or to the potential finalists to overcome that you want me to take it or you want to take it well I have an opinion <laughs> Let us both give you our opinions. We uh, both have opinions. Go ahead. It's, it's a more common than you might think it to is. get to the final two and not be all in agreement at that point. But it's rare to come out of that session, at least in my experience, where everybody's not on the same page. So it, at some point, if, if five feel really strong and two or it's four to three, or five, two, or six, one. I found that in most every case, at some point deliberations, the then those trustees, someone will step up and say, this is not my first choice, but I'm going to support the candidate, the majority of the board, and do everything that we can to make them successful. That's the way it usually works out. Um, I. I believe only one time in the searches that I've been involved with that it had not been a unanimous vote, only once. And so, but many of them in the initial, when you get down final two and we start to deliberate, uh, it's common not to, everybody's first choice is not everybody's, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's just a matter of working through that. And, and sometimes it, it takes an hour, sometimes it takes five or six hours. But rarely, do trustees not end up being on the same page in the end? And I think it, it does happen more often than you would expect because if we're doing our job well, we bring you at least two really strong candidates. So there is a difference of opinion among you. And so it's a good problem to have. Um, I, I agree with what Gary's telling you. Often a board behind closed doors will agree to disagree, but not state it out publicly. That gives your new superintendent a good, strong start um, if the board feels comfortable doing that. Of course, you all vote individually at the time, what you're conscious. And one, one thing I wanted to mention, whether you're sports fans or not, you may understand the term free agency. This is free agency. If 
you, in a, in a school district as, as desirable as Destin, um, if your top, when you get to your top candidate, there's a good chance that they may be a top candidate somewhere else, right? And so that's why it's so important to have two or three people at the end of the first round. Hopefully you'll have two or three that, you know, you say, man, I'd feel good about either one of these candidates because they're, there's things that just happen. Um, they, they decide to, uh, like say, they've got a good offer from another district and they decide to move there. Or they come and visit and whether it's a male or female, um, the other one says, no. Nah, you know, spouse, yeah. You know, we got, we're taking care of mama and they live right down the street and our kids are seniors and this is their senior year. You've got all these factors coming into play. And so, at that last moment, you don't want to drop out, but it's, it is possible for the reasons. And and sometimes they'll go back home and it'll get, they'll tell their board and then their board will say, well, we'll give you $25,000 and a, a five-year extension to stay. And they go, okay, well, I'll just stay. Mm -hmm. Those things have happened. And so we need to be aware of that and talk about that. That's why it's so critical to have a couple or three that you feel real good about because something could happen. That. And that has happened to us. Mm -hmm. We had a long finalist name, and I, I did everything but make him swear on a stack of Bibles that he wouldn't pull out. And he did. He did. Uh, he, the, the, the district that he was coming from, uh, he was named long finalist, and two weeks in was a long finalist. He saw, and I, saw, I saw the number, and I was watching TV with my wife, and I said, like, This is not good. I said, This is not good. And, and sure enough, he pulled out. So, because the district had offered him a lot more money and his wife wanted to see him. It happens. We do everything possible we can to prevent it. So I'm kind of rambling now. But that goes why we need two good ones at the end. Because those things can happen. Mm -hmm. I have the last two questions. The school board and your firm have worked together to successfully select a superintendent and have agreed to a three-year term with the finalist. Is there any type of guarantee your firm offers in the event the superintendent does not successfully complete their contract? We don't offer a guarantee, and I know some other search firms do. The reason we don't is that is often outside of our control. It's either something that, you know, there could be a change in the board, and so the board-superintendent relation might change, um, or also that superintendent, as we mentioned a couple of times, has... Um, done something that no one could anticipate and so although we don't offer a guarantee that's one of the reasons we do the vetting that we do because we want to find we want to have this track record of so many superintendents who are still in their position and for the districts that use us for their full service search we offer a reduced rate for goal setting and team building right after your new superintendent comes so that hopefully you start off the relationship in a really positive way. You know, the, uh, Dr. Salinas, the, uh, there's a reason why the average stay at superintendent is less than four years in Texas, right? And some of that is because we do things we shouldn't do. And a lot of times it's because boards are dysfunctional as well. And we can look around our city and see where that happens. And so, a lot of that is so much out of our control and politics and change over <coughs> and it's you know it's a 50 50 deal on, on and sometimes boards want to go a different direction quickly and uh, sometimes it's nothing that the superintendent uh, you know is under his or her control and the last question is does your firm work with the school board to draft a contract for the loan finalists yes ma'am whatever search firm you hire I would really be happy to work with you on the contract. One of the things that I think also sets our firm apart is we really believe that the contract terms, the format of the contract, and the actual terms, the length, the salary, those type of uh, terms should be discussed with the person before you ever name them as loan finalists. Other search firms and, and school districts in general assume that that 21-day waiting period, it's called a waiting period, is for purposes of negotiating the contract, and I don't think it's, that's in your best interest. And so as your legal counsel, 
whoever you use as a search firm, I would highly recommend that we get a contract that you all are comfortable with and when you're ready to name a loan finalist that we have a discussion with that person to make sure there's a meeting of the minds before they're ever named. Gary and I both know of situations I've helped districts where a loan finalist was named and then the board and the applicant couldn't come to terms and that's embarrassing. It's a, it wastes time. You don't want to lose time at that point if you can't reach an agreement and so we'd be happy to help with the contract and we would recommend that it be done before the loan finalist is named. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. And you know what, there's language in the contract that's important to everybody, but there's a couple things that are more important. Length of contract, salary and benefits. If you come to agreement on that, in all cases we've dealt with it. The other, the other stuff works its way out, the contract language on, on the other thing. And so what, been successful for us is that if the board decides you, you want to name the loan finalist, uh, then what most boards, and of course you may be in here, but most boards would like that, you know, I would be there when you decided on the final, but generally I would call and say, congratulations, you know, uh, the board would like to name you the loan finalist if we can agree in principle mm -hmm. on some things. And you would have given me those things. I said, the board's prepared to do this, this, and this. And they would say, oh, that's awesome, great. Or they would say, well, you know, could we maybe do this? And then we'd come back to the board. And so before you ever named them, we would have agreed in principle on those major things. That way, again, there's no surprises. Like Faith said, it's tremendously embarrassing to name a loan finalist. You're happy, they're happy, and then you make an offer, and they go, wait a minute. And then the contract format, what we think is a good way of handling it is once you all approve the format with no names, no terms filled in, right before the second round of interviews, if you're going to do two rounds, that we send out on your behalf that form contract with no names or, or salary dollars filled in and say, this is the form of the contract that the Judson Board is going to be offering. If it's offered to you, is it acceptable to you? So that not only do you have a meeting of the minds and principle on the terms, but they've looked at the actual contract form. I think I've mentioned to you all, there's a superintendent um, friendly contract out there that is put out by um, the superintendent's group, TASA. And it looks similar to the TASB contract, but it is very pro superintendent just as TASB's contract is pro-board. And so we prefer to work from that TASB model. And there are some of the terms of the superintendent-friendly contract that I would advise you not to agree to. And I think if you are coming to terms on the contract form before you name them as a loan finalist, you're in the driver's seat. You have the leverage at that point. And so I think that's really good to be thinking about now. Thank you so much for your time. Sure, thank I appreciate y'all coming out. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thanks for having Thanks. us. You want five minutes? Okay, we will take a five-minute break, and the time is 8.48.